So now you've seen vectors and you've seen how crypto is going to use vectors. Now I'm going to show you some examples, not completely worked out, but uh, give you a sense of how, how you could use these crypto extensions to do some, some useful things. And this is joint work we had with uh, SecureRF, and there's uh, Derek and, uh, uh, who helped uh, write this paper. Uh, uh, who, and one of the examples we have is for a very fast, secure boot. So uh, you saw Linton earlier talking about defense systems, and that's an example where a very fast, secure boot might, might be important. Uh, and so uh, you can't wait 20 seconds to, to you know, start up certain DOD systems, for, just for an example. Okay. Um, so you've, you've got an idea of the, uh, the uh, crypto, uh, the vector extensions. They're up to 32 registers, some flexibility in how it's shaped, and then infinite flexibility on the length. You've got this metadata, nominally 16 bits per register. It gives you the width and the type. Uh, and there's some fixed uh, metadata, like the uh, vector length is shared between all 32 registers. Uh, and then if you have the crypto extension, there'll be some additional state, and we're still de defining exactly what that is, but you know, I've shown that here the way I did in the last presentation as a two little small register banks to go to th do the three to eight mapping and the, uh, and the uh, uh, oddball widths. Okay. And we're going to use those vector instructions to do all of our, all of our vector, all of our long word arithmetic. Uh, and the assembly encoding definitely not decided yet. We have to you know, talk to the assembler people. But I, I've chosen something here to just you know, illustrate. So we'll have this uh, uh, crypto instruction. And it would, it'll have a f function that you're doing, like encryption or decryption. Uh, and it'll say uh, what uh, cipher uh, you're using, like AES. And so to do a 128-bit block of AES data, uh, you, would, you would use a plain text input register, a key input register, and an output register would be your cipher text. Okay, so pretty simple uh, assembly instruction to, to do a block of AES. So, uh, you know, some of the other ISAs do, do like a round of AES instead of a whole uh, AES conversion. Uh, but that makes it very difficult to do things like uh, side channel um, countermeasures and things like that. So by doing uh, a full round, not only is it more efficient than one instruction, you know, replaces thousands of instructions, but also it makes it a lot easier for the implementer who needs to have side channel protection to be able to implement, implement that. If, of course, if you don't need side channel protection, Nothing says you have to do it. Okay, uh, so the vector commands can work on one element. So we can take the scalar shape, or we can use a vector shape, uh, and we could do multiple elements. So you could, and and how you implement ha doing multiple elements is is up to you. You can um, uh, have you know like I said, you could have one S box doing one byte at a time, and it could do many many vector elements of plain text. Uh, or you could have you know, several big AES engines, you know, eat, you know, do two lanes at a time or four lanes at a time. It's up to you. Uh, but, but the ISO will allow the operations to be vectorized. Right? So you can do single AES or you can do multiple AES with one, with one opcode. Okay. And one advantage of this whole approach uh, is that if it's strip mined properly, uh, you, you can run on any implementation that supports the standard. Uh, whether you only have you know, one lane at a time or many lanes at a time, the, 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 uh, the assembly code, if, if it's strip mined properly, will run on any machine. So if you have AES, just like somebody else who has AES, you could take 160 clock cycles and do 128 bits. They could be cranking out several gigabits per second. The program is exactly the same. Okay. okay, and as usual, everything is subject to change. So just keep reminding you of that. So, so here's an example of uh, AES uh, Gawa counter mode, ASGCM. It's probably the most uh, used internet standard, uh, like for instance in TLS. 
and this is a block diagram you know, from, uh, from NIST, you know, posted on Wikipedia, and I've annotated a bit. Um, and so the first thing we have is a counter, which gets uh, incremented uh, with each message block. The message blocks are 128 bits. Uh, and a counter, uh, counter can be different lengths, but uh, uh, let's just, for purpose of discussion, say it's uh, 128 bits too. Uh, and when you do multiple message blocks, you just keep incrementing the counter. So if you vectorize this, let's say your vector length is four, uh, and you have 512 bits in your vector registers, uh, you would load the first time with your, with your initial count, you know, count plus one, count plus two, count plus three, but then each time through the loop, you would just add four to all the elements. So it's just a scalar plus vector add, uh, just exactly the way Roger showed you, you know, with the, with the four stored as a scalar and uh, your current four counts stored in your four elements in your vector. So you just use vector add over and over again to keep incrementing those, those counters. And then you have encryption, uh, and that would be the AS instruction I just showed you on the previous uh, slide. So you just one instruction, you do AES, that'll do all four elements. Uh, so what, again, it doesn't matter how it's implemented, the same code will, will if, you, if your VL is set to four, uh, then you, you know, you're gonna do four AES chunks uh, every time you go through the loop. Uh, then you have uh, uh, XORing the uh, uh, plain text with the key stream, which you just calculated out of the cipher, uh, and uh, presumably you know, you store that uh, back in memory. So again, these are all just very simple vector instructions. Uh, and then um, the bottom part is a GAWA hash, uh, which is a, a hash which is calculated over a GAWA field, which is in, in the field two to the 128th. Uh, and that looks like it's sequential, uh, and it doesn't lend itself to vectorization, but actually it turns out that, that it can be vectorized because the uh, multiplication operation is commutative, and you can play a little game you know, with, the, with the algebra here. So, so this is the equation for the um, uh, iteration on the first line, and we can expand that out, just multiply all the terms out and show part of the sequence. Uh, and, and that can be regrouped into as many lanes as you, as you want to uh, compute at a time. So here I've shown as if you were going to do four uh, G hashes, uh, four uh, multiplies, four Galois multiplies uh, in a four element vector, you would, you would use the equation in, in this form uh, here. So you factored it out and, and you, you have to pre-calculate uh, number, number squared, number cubed, and number to the fourth power. Uh, and, and use those here, but then that allows you to calculate four at a time instead of doing one at a time in, in your iteration. And you iterate four at a time in essentially the same way. Uh, and so regroup that, and you can see this whole thing just, you know, again boils down to, uh, uh, besides the pre-computation of the, of the four elements, you just use two instructions each time through the loop as a vector add and a vector multiply. And this uses the uh, special form of the multiply with the reduction. So you would specify the uh, uh, reduction polynomial, which I've shown here in the top box. It's a special reduction polynomial that's defined in the uh, uh, G-hash standard in the, G, uh, in the ASGCM. Uh, and the 128 is assumed to always be a one. Uh, so you, only, you don't need 129 bits to store it because the first bit is implied and uh, you, only, you, know, you only have four other bits out of the 128 that are actually set to one. Okay. So what does that get you? Uh, well, of course, this is so implementation dependent. I've said you could do everything you know, from 160 clock cycles to you know, per, uh, per 128 bits, so less than one bit per, per clock cycle all the way up to you know, uh, 1,000 bits per clock cycle. So it's, it's a little hard to say. But I made some kind of rough assumptions here, a little paper and pencil uh, computation. So if we implemented a 16 S-box AES, which would be a very common implementation, so you'd have 16 bytes, 16 S-boxes, be able to do one round per clock cycle, basically. And it's a very common implementation that a lot of people use when they're building an AES accelerator. So it would take 14 clocks to do 14 rounds. Uh, you know, maybe another one or two uh, for, for odds and ends, another, another one or two for overhead and strip mining and, 
and stuff like that. Uh, and, and similarly, I made the assumption that there's uh, one uh, Galois multiplier. You can do a 128-bit multiplier. Uh, and, and, the, and my assumption was that I could, I could, with pipelining and whatever, I could do four elements in 20 clock cycles. And so if you, again, kind of paper and pencil version of that, uh, we can do a 8K-bit uh, message in around 2,000 clock cycles. And for comparison, if we look at the same thing done in the scalar instruction set on, on let's say, a Cortex-M3, where I had some examples, uh, it takes about 192,000 clock cycles to do this in so, you know, it's totally in software. And so we're getting about a 100 to 1 speed up, roughly, with a fairly typical implementation of the accelerators, you know, just one multiplier and one uh, full round of AES uh, implemented. Okay, so now uh, talk about SHA, uh, SHA-256, most common uh, hashing algorithm uh, besides GCM maybe that, that we talked about in the, the G-hash we talked about in the previous slide. Um, this is the SHA algorithm, Again, you know, took this from Wikipedia and annotated it a bit. Uh, and, and this has, you know, as you can see, various uh, odd, kind of oddball arithmetic operations occurring on, you know, on 32-bit chunks. Uh, of the data. Uh, it turns out that uh, you have to repeat this algorithm uh, 64 times. Oh, and I'm running out of time. Okay. So repeat this uh, 64 times. So the idea here then would be to do one round uh, per clock cycle. Uh, and then this is, this is an example of assembly code that uh, you know, show that you basically use these three instructions which are highlighted and along with the strip mining and the other stuff. Uh, and, and you can uh, do uh, uh, SHA in probably around 100 clock cycles. Uh, in in a Cortex M3, uh, this takes about 3,600 uh, clock cycles. So we've gone from 3,600 down to 100. Uh, pretty big improvement. So finally, our, uh, I'm out of time. Uh, so can, can I continue for? No? Oh. No questions. Okay. Okay. Well, I've kind of missed my uh, uh, secure RF stuff. Okay. Oh, I'm going to, I guess they're going to give me a few more seconds. I've only got one or two more slides. So SecureRF uses, uses this routine here. Uh, it's a Galois field multiplication. Um, and by vectorizing that, we, they're going to do one row in the matrix for each uh, element. And uh, going to take the matrix, split it up into eight, uh, an eight by eight matrix, split it up into eight vectors, store it in eight different vector registers. And they got an acceleration when they do this of about roughly three to one. So the important part to note here is that this E multiply, which is where the matrix multiply occurs, has gone from 180,000 clock cycles down to you know, around 12,000 clock cycles by vectorizing that, that part of the operation. And what that means uh, is compared to uh, kind of a classical secure boot scenario, uh, we can do the um, Walnut uh, DSA signature in about 86,000 clock cycles. The SHA has been accelerated by 36 to 1, which is the sloped line, which is message dependent. And then compared to uh, a usual way of doing this would be a P256 signature verification, which would take 45 million clock cycles, uh, and the SHA being much slower as well. So altogether, uh, for, we can do a 64K byte chunk where the big dots are shown. We do a 64-bit chunk of data, secure boot that in under one millisecond. Uh, and this would normally, as you can see, be normally about 280 times slower. So it would be taking, instead of a quarter second, we're taking one millisecond. So big acceleration. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the extra time.